over to you professor sm tuli sir everybody is listening to you sir sir uh well i consider it a great privilege that i have an opportunity to address the millennial budding orthopedic surgeons of our country i am fully aware that the brightest of medical students opt for orthopedics and i wish you all the best in this program you have an opportunity to interact with balanced teachers and experienced teachers your interaction with these teachers will help you develop a sound robust basic knowledge of orthopedics if our base is strong we can make a very tall pyramid on it sky is the limit when we learn and one should also keep it in mind that india provides us roughly 1/6 of the world clinical material our circumstances also permit us to see disease in various stages of natural course initial moderate even neglected all this teaches us the biological aspects of a disease in orthopedics as i mentioned sky is the limit there no end to the knowledge i wish you all the best in your examination so called oski i have gone through the papers i'm sure almost all of you will be able to make through it just don't forget it i will give you my best of wishes but don't forget learning never ends wish you all the best thank you very much sir thank you very much uh, respected uh, colleagues and uh, students and uh, as we discussed in the last session on oski uh there is no need to get perturbed about the new methodology which the national board is uh, uh, uh adopting to assess you all uh i have prepared some uh, uh, some oski modules for you and uh, the purpose of this presentation is to make you familiar with what is in store for you well uh, to give you a birds eye view of what i gathered from the communication which has been received yesterday from the national board is a little variance from what uh, i have experienced uh, as the oski examination on previous occasions well what i'm uh, what i gather now is that uh, 20 students would be sitting in one hall and uh, instead of each student rotating into different cabins which provide you with the stations uh, this time it is probably going to be 20 students maintaining adequate human distance between themselves maybe 6 feet or more than that would be sitting in a hall and there is going to be a, a tv screen or a or a screen which is likely to be more than 55 inches so a large screen is going to be put up and through direct uh, control from the national board in all the centers a standard oski uh, paper is going to be projected so what is going to be projected on the screen is going to be the station itself so i am told that 25 stations are going to be there so meaning thereby that probably there will be 25 oski related slides and uh, the students probably will have to give the answers on an answer sheet now this is all i have not been briefed by anyone but this is what i read between the lines because uh the communication mentions that the examination center 
must be equipped with a high quality scanner which will be used to scan the answer sheets of the candidates after, at the end of the examination. So this is uh, what it is going to be. One by one, a slide will be projected on the screen, which you will be watching, and it is going to be there for five minutes. So you will have five minutes to respond to the questions which are there related to a case scenario or a particular uh, diagram or an x-ray which is projected on the screen. So to give you an idea about how these questions are going to be framed uh, on uh, the subject of hand and peripheral nerve injuries, uh, the team of conceptual orthopedics has prepared some of these questions and I have uh, sort of just put in my inputs into it to make them, uh, to polish them a little more. And uh, I'll be showing you some of these and explaining you how to answer these. So uh, to start with this, okay. So uh, the first station says that you have shown a diagram. So this is the diagram of uh, uh, an anatomical diagram of a finger. And uh, one of the, uh, there is an arrow which says, identify the marked structure. And uh, along with that, there are uh, other questions like what is its anatomical significance? And uh, then there is a question, that if you fail to reconstruct this structure, what would be the effect to the underlying tendon? Uh, so the first and foremost is you should be able to identify the mouth structure. So this, uh, to my mind, is the A4 pulley. So what you are sh being shown here is the pulley mechanisms in the fingers. And by your knowledge, you know that the cruciate pulleys are the ones which allow flexion at the at the at the IP joints, whereas the annular pulleys are the ones which keep the tendon close to the bone. So this is one of the annular pulleys. So this is the A2 pulley and this is the A4 pulley. So the answer here is that this is an A4 pulley which is being shown. And what is its anatomical significance? So the significance of the annular pulleys is that they sort of economize the flexor tendon excursion for optimum finger movement. The, the third question was failure to reconstructure. Uh, what would be the effect to the underlying tendon? So. We all know that if the pulley is not reconstructed, then the tendon is going to exhibit, it is going to bowstring, and the efficiency of the tendon mechanism is going to suffer. Uh, the last was name four techniques of tendon suturing. So you must be aware of uh, some of these techniques, and though these are named techniques, but even if you say that one, uh, one can also, the answer can also be a two-strand repair or a four-strand repair, Kessler grasping type of repair, Adelaide repair, Suge repair. So four of these, any four, I think will give you the, the, the marks which are, uh, which are assigned to each station. I am told each station will, having, will be having eight marks. So if you have answered all the four questions correctly, you get eight marks. Otherwise, uh, the board will decide what is the proportion to be deducted in case the candidate cannot answer all the four questions. Well, the silver lining on the crowd, cloud is that there are no, there is no negative marking. Uh, uh, usually in OSCE examination, because of the simplicity uh, to avoid the 
interplay of guesswork and bluffing on the part of the candidate, negative marking is usually introduced. But the board has been very lenient as we have discussed earlier also. This time the examination should be lenient. And there are no negative marks. So please do not leave any question unanswered. This is my advice to you. Please follow it. Even if you are in doubt, uh, you give, give it your best uh, chance and do answer the question. Hi, friends. This is Dr. Apoor Mehra. And the topic here is about the latest announcement by NBE for the introduction of the OSCE pattern across different spectrums of postgraduate exams. Orthopedics is not different and will also share the same thing. OSCE is an objective pattern, objective structured clinical examination. But the term that has been used in the order is observed structured clinical examination because it's more like a virtual exam that will be relayed in different centers but monitored from the central place, the NB. The exam will be divided into two days. Day one will be the major part consisting of OSCE, which will be of 200 marks, and day one will also have 40 marks of Viva stations. In the OSCE, there are usually 30 stations, 25 are the real stations where you have to answer the questions, 5 are the breathing blank stations. E station, you have to be there for 5 minutes, 8 marks each. So you start from one point, finish off the 30 stations and go out. That means you have to be in the exam continuously for 150 minutes. That's about two and a half hour of complete focus. Although these five blank stations are classically followed throughout the world and also in India, where the OSCE exists in PEDS and ENT, but the order is quiet about it. Whatever you will answer, you will sit and write on a sheet of paper which will be scanned and sent to the NB center who will do the marking system. As told in PEDS and ENT, there are four examiners and these four examiners will be monitoring how things will be going. There is also a speculation that they will be doing the four Viva stations, but the order is quiet about it. Normally, in OSCE, in PEDS and ENT, in non-COVID periods, there were four working stations where the demonstrations were there. For example, if we extrapolate to orthopedics, they can give you a Thomas splint which you have to wear on a mannequin. But at this scenario, we are not sure how this will happen. An OSCE station, in the experienced examiner's view, is all or none phenomenon. Question number one is about the diagnosis and if you don't know that, it is very obvious that it's like the cycle in a cycle stand. If you push one, all fall together. So if your diagnosis is correct, then only you can move ahead. And going on the same thing, OSCE will be what you have seen over the last three years, what you have done over the last three years, how you have fared in your wards, in your operation theatres. Conceptual orthopedics has all the spectrums to prepare you well for any pattern of exam. OSCE, the VIVAS and the practical exam. Everything runs on the law of averages. Out of 25, 15 are good to pass. 4 to 5 will be very tough. The rule says read, answer and move ahead. Usually, in 85% cases, the two stations are never connected. 10 to 15% cases, there might be a connection. There might be a follower. Viva, same day. Apart from these 150 minutes, four stations, 10 marks each. 
out of these eight classical topics going from specimens surgical approaches implants prosthetics x rays biostats surgical approaches osteology all the topics have already been uploaded in conceptual orthopedics app day 2 is the classical practical exam on a patient or a clinical simulation they have written that at least one of them should be a patient but if you don't find then you can do it on a clinical simulated scenario so 40 marks of viva and 60 marks of these practicals makes it 100 200 for oski 100 for viva in cases you have to pass 50% in each 100 in oski and 50 marks in total in viva in cases so your marks will not be added they are independent compartments but remember out of these 300 marks day 1 has 240 marks whenever anything starts it's a new thing a new question a new variety new pattern it's lenient the marking is easy the questions are easy and remember oski is something which is more reliable because it's objective rather than subjective or emotional change is the only constant but we are geared up to handle you during the change some of the questions our students have asked we have already conducted few oski sessions zoom webinars where we interacted with the students in the presence of professor s m tuli professor sudhir kumar professor anil dhal professor gopal kumar dr shailesh pai dr harpreet dr ashish and many other teachers of conceptual there were some question that teach the students have asked are we supposed to sit down and write the answers yes because the new order says there should be two halls about four to five laptops with hd webcams with a projector with at least 55 inches of screen in each hall examination should be conducted so that at least 1 meter distance should be between the students and the total number to maximum of 20 so you are expected to sit in front of these screens and you will be having a live interaction or monitoring from nb centers in whatever takes place you will be writing the answers dropping it on the station they will be scanned and sent to nb will the ms exams have the same pattern again the answer is same we are yet to see that nb will submit its reports and then probably it can happen that you will have the same thing in ms exams in case presentation will it be classical like the practical we used to have earlier absolutely yes because for each center there are four examiners to be allotted by nb which will not be the resident examiners of that place or that hospital so these are going to conduct the classical way your viva cases have been going there will not be any negative marking clearly mentioned in the notes what syllabus are we supposed to read are we supposed to complete entire spectrum of ortho answer is yes and what are we doing we at conceptual orthopedics are dividing the entire orthopedics into 40 modules preparing it at one place in called as dnb oski in the app along with musculoskeletal imaging which has x rays and mri in the app orthotics and processes in the app surgical approaches in the app implants and instruments and platings in the app biostats in the app so we are making all the categories out of them 90% things already exist but before you write your exam the 100% content will be uploaded but i can assure you one thing whatever is there even if you do that you will pass with a gold medal please hold oski oriented sessions mock oski we will be doing it live every week to stimulate you further apart from what i have just promised you the teachers who are building on this content and the content of conceptual orthopedics are professor s m tuli professor sudhir kumar one of the senior most examiners of the nation he was head at nb for many years he retired as a director professor and hod of ucms and gtb hospital delhi and then 
is heading the Department of Orthopedics at Shada Hospital. Professor Anil Dhal, Director Professor and Head of Mulana Dhar Medical College, Delhi. Sir is heading the ESI Hospital, Faridabad at present. Professor Shantaram Shetty, who is the Vice Chancellor at Nitti University in Mangalore and the Director of Tejaswini Hospital, Mangalore. Professor V.B. Basin, Head of the Department of Sir Gangaram Hospital, Delhi. Professor Shekhar Agarwal, Head of the Department of Sun Permanent Hospital, Delhi. Dr. Matthew Vergis, HOD, St. Stephen's Hospital, Delhi. Professor Ajit Kumar, Head of the Department of Orthopedics at Tejaswini Hospital, Mangalore. Dr. Harpreet Singh, Consultant Orthopedics, Shoulder and Upper Limb at Indian Smiley Center, Delhi. Dr. Ashish Taneja, Joint Replacement Arthroscopy Surgeon, Max Hospital, Delhi. Dr. Sunil Kinney, Consultant Arthroplasty and Arthroscopy, Manipal Hospital, Bangalore. Dr. Shailesh Pai, Trauma Consultant and Complex Astabular Surgeon, Tejaswini Hospital, Mangalore. Dr. Minal Sharma, at Asian Hospital, Faridabad, Delhi. Dr. Rajiv Raman, Consultant Arthroscopy, Kolkata. Dr. Anuj Jain, Parmanan Hospital, Delhi. Dr. Vivek, Consultant Orthopedic Oncology. And there will be a different OSCE on this tumor area, which is very rarely covered in different areas. And you will definitely get one or two OSCEs in your exam. Dr. Vivek is a Surgical Orthopedic Oncologist at Max Hospital, Delhi. Dr. Jitesh, covering spine. Dr. Abhinav, creating the content of OSCE, consultant at KEM Hospital. Dr. Fahim and Dr. Vishal, consultant orthopedics from Tejaswini Hospital, Mangalore. They are also preparing the OSCE modules. Dr. Vishal will work on arthroplasty and Dr. Fahim on pediatric orthopedics. Dr. Suvrat Arya on rheumatology. Dr. Anuj on foot and ankle. Dr. Yogesh from Mangalore on arthroscopy. And Dr. Piyush is helping us build the content. So these are the teachers who are all working day in, day out to make sure that it's the entire spectrum of orthopedy being covered. We also have Professor Gopa Kumar who is going to contribute with pediatric orthopedics to us. In the CO app, we are introducing a new package which will have these OSCE modules, a workbook, videos and you will be eligible for this package till the exam gets over. Apart from that, you will have complete access to the content, complete access to the conceptual orthopedic content unhindered till the time you write your exam. We have 200 seats. This is the email ID drapur at gmail.com to write to and the phone number given here on which you can WhatsApp. The next two sessions, you're all invited to come and join us on a session on pediatric orthopedics from Professor Ajit Kumar and Dr. Shailesh Pai on Monday, 22nd June, 6 to 7 p.m. There will be other eminent teachers like Professor Sudhir Kumar, Professor Anil Dhal joining the session. And next on Thursday, 25th June, 7 to 8 p.m., we have Professor Shantaram Shetty and Dr. Shailesh Pai again discussing lower limb trauma. You are all welcome to attend this session. Wish you all the best for your exam. Thank you very much.